Hey there! Hello! And once again, welcome to Biopandit, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. This is sort of your very own Maha Pandit. Today, I'm going to talk about a fundamental aspect of structural biology, that is protein secondary structural elements. Allowed values of phi and psi angles is represented as the Ramachandran plot. The Ramachandran plot tells us about the conformations that a polypeptide chain can adapt. But it does not tell us whether these adapted conformations will be stable. Five major non-covalent interactions are responsible for maintaining the stability of a native structure. These interactions include disulfide bonds, salt bridges, hydrogen bonds, long distance electrostatic interactions and van der Waals interactions. Among these interactions, hydrogen bond interactions play a critical role to stabilize the globular structures of all known proteins. Let us now come to the point. Although proteins are linear polymers, most soluble proteins are globular and they have a tightly packed core consisting preliminary of hydrophobic amino acids. Segments of the folded chain in nearly all proteins adapt conformations in which the phi and psi torsion angles repeat in a regular pattern. These regular segments are called the elements of secondary structure of the protein. Three general types of secondary structural elements have been identified. Helices, beta sheets and beta turns. We differentiate among these three elements based on two factors. One, the characteristic phi psi dihedral angles of the respective amino acids and two, the characteristic hydrogen bonding pattern. Let us start with helices. If a polypeptide chain is twisted by the same amount about each of its C alpha atoms, it assumes a helical conformation. The main chain hydrogen bonding pattern in helices are intra element in nature, meaning two neighboring helices never exhibit any main chain hydrogen bonding. Alpha helices can be right-handed or clockwise or they can be left-handed and counterclockwise. But because all amino acids except glycine in proteins have the L configuration, steric constraints favor the right-handed helix. In biological proteins, only a small turn or so of left-handed alpha helix is all that we ever observe. Alpha helix structure repeats itself every 5.4 angstrom along the helix axis. This is why we say that alpha helix has a pitch of 5.4 angstrom. Alpha helices have 3.6 amino acid residues per turn. So a helix of 36 amino acid length has 10 turns. The separation of residues along the helix axis is 1.5 angstrom. So the alpha helix has a rise per residue of 1.5 angstrom. Every main chain carboxyl and amino group is hydrogen bonded to a peptide bond 4 residues away. This gives a very regular stable arrangement. Well, alpha helix is not the only type of helix observed in protein crystal structures. In fact, there are 4 major types of helices. These are right and left handed alpha helix. 310 helix and pi helix. You can see their molecular structures here. The helical few is superimposed on their backbones and side chains are shown as thin lines. Why these helices are different? Well, first of all, they all look different. Why do they look different? Obviously, their conformations are different. You can distinguish between these helices in terms of different conformational parameters such as helical pitch, hydrogen bonding pattern, and characteristic phi and psi angles. I would not encourage you to memorize all of these, but if you just remember the hydrogen bonding pattern, the rest can just be deciphered. See, in alpha helices, irrespective of being left or right-handed, every ith residue has a backbone hydrogen bond with the i plus fourth residue. For 310 helix, this is between i and i plus threeth residue. For pi helix, it is between i and i plus fifth residue. If you just remember this, the rest is easy. Hydrogen bonds have a specific distance criterion. So you can easily understand that if the same number of amino acids make up alpha, 310 and pi helix, 
the pi helix has to be the shortest, the 310 helix has to be the longest and alpha helix will be intermediate. Longest means highest helical pitch, shortest means smallest helical pitch. Now let us discuss about helix dipoles. In our video on basic chemical structure of amino acids, we demonstrated that individual amino acids exhibit specific dipole moments. Helix dipole moment is a cumulative effect of these individual micro dipoles of constituent amino acid residues. Because helical peptides have periodic and well ordered structures, every backbone dipole vector points to approximately the same direction. You can see the scenario in the left hand side figure. This alignment of many micro dipoles in the same direction creates a resultant large dipole moment directed from C terminus to N terminus. Why is this helix dipole so important? Because dipole dipole interactions between multiple helices can effectively destabilize the protein structure. However, the effect of this dipole can be neutralized by placing 0.5 to 0.7 positive unit charge near the C terminus and 0.5 to 0.7 negative unit charge near the end terminus of the helix. This is why biological proteins having compact 3D structures have evolved to exhibit a positive discharge residue at the C terminus and a negative discharge residue at the end terminus of helices. There is another fascinating attribute I want to present that is amphiphilic nature of alpha helices. The alpha helix has 3.6 residues per turn. This periodicity means that Residues 3 to 4 amino acids apart in the sequence will project from the same face of an alpha helix. This is of extreme importance in protein structures. How? In many alpha helices, polar and hydrophobic residues are distributed 3 to 4 residues apart in the sequence to produce a helix with one hydrophilic face and one hydrophobic face. Such a helix is known as amphiphilic alpha helix. Helices with this character frequently occur on the surface of the protein where their polar faces are in contact with bulk water, while hydrophobic faces stabilize helix helix packing with the protein core. So, this is all for now, guys. For further information on proteins and nucleic acids, please keep watching the other videos of Biopandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the red gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, please hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys, see you soon.